welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and uh, today I'm going to make a, an arbor for gear cutters and I'll give you the story behind this is back a year maybe two ago I decided it was time for me to cut my first gear. I had never made one before and I'd got a rotary table and I ordered, ordered a set of gear cutters and the ones I ordered I'd examined my Craftsman lathe, I figured that'd be a good place to test the gear and figured out that those gears were 16 uh, diametral pitch with 14 and a half degree pressure angle. So that's the kind of gear cutters I ordered. And then I made a mandrel, you know, to fit and then I, I cut my first gear and then I, over the period of time since then I've cut maybe 10 or 15 more gears. And I got to looking at the, the internals of a, a gear cutter manufacturer's manual and they said, well, the most common gears used in uh, industry and or on the market, whatever, most common manufactured were a 20 diametral pitch, 14 and a half degree pressure ink. And I thought, well, while I can, I better just go ahead and get a set of gears for that. Well, the, the DP-16 gears had come with a 22 millimeter hole in them. Uh, so I had to make a 22 millimeter mandrel. Well, these come with a 16 millimeter hole in them. So I've got to make a 16 millimeter mandrel. And of course, they've got a different size uh, keyway, a four millimeter keyway. So a whole new set of problems to make a, a new uh, gear cutter arbor. The last time I ordered an R8 arbor with a blank end on it and I used it to hold the gear cutter but the thing is a little bit short close coupled up to the you know the head of the mill and because of gears being round and them fitting up there the biggest gear I could cut was a 60 tooth gear so I figured well later on I'm gonna have to re remake that particular cutter in a longer length if I want to make gears with more teeth and I thought, well, I'll do that. And I thought, no, I'll wait till I need that one. But this time around, I'm going to make a, a mandrel, a, I mean, an arbor for uh, the gear cutters. It's a different size, 16 millimeter. I'm going to make, this time, I'm going to make an arbor that fits into the three quarter inch R8 collet. And it'll stick down a little bit further, and possibly I can make a gear larger than 60 teeth. So, there you go. I was uh, watching something on TV the other day, and these guys, well, yeah, it was on TV, it was YouTube on TV. These guys were 3D printing a ring gear for the differential on this pickup truck. They were having a hard time of it because it delaminated on them and all kind of things. I think maybe that was a little ambitious, you know, of a project. And they used a lot of, ex, you know, exotic plastics and stuff. But by the time I got tired of watching the video, it hadn't worked out. You know, it torn up every time. And I don't know, they might have had success toward the end of it. They just didn't hold my attention. Which brings up the subject of viewers. I don't mention viewers very much, but I'm really grateful to have viewers. And I'm glad that you guys will spend, you know, 15 to 30 minutes of your time on my channel every now and then watching whatever I do and I want to thank you for that because if you didn't watch I wouldn't make the videos <laughs> all right let's let's get on to making the arbor well it's absolutely true just about every one of my projects starts on the bandsaw this one's obviously no different cut pretty good pretty quick this is 12L41 is what I'm going to use. Alright, so now we've got the question is we need a keyway here to keep this guy from turning on the on the uh, little arbor that I make for it or mandrel or whatever you want to call it. I found that a point one six one drill here fits right in the slot there. With practically no slop and that's a number 20 drill so let's find out how big that is in metric keys 
convert 0.161 inches to millimeters? The answer is 4.09 millimeters. Well, there you go. So now we know what we need. Probably exactly a 4 millimeter key. I wonder if they have that at Redneck Supply. We'll have to find out. This stuff is soft so I could most likely make A-bomb size cuts, but I'd rather not. Why stress things if you don't have to? We're a long ways from where I want to go. Sometimes it's good to wake up and look at what you're doing. Alright, I got it uh, fairly well three quarters of an inch right here. Maybe it, maybe it's three quarters and a quarter of a thousandth. But it's really close to being dead on. I'm just going to true up this part here. Make sure it's true and then we'll Swap out the chuck and put in a collet, turn everything around and work on the other end. Alright, so I'll smooth that up and I'll part it off and then we'll pop off the chuck and pop on a collet. Convert 16 millimeters to inches. 0 0.63 inches. Thank you. There we are. 0 0.63 inches. That's how big we're going to cut this end here. And then we're going to have to have uh, the ability to run a little bolt up inside of it. I'm going to use the parting tool to machine this down because I only need a very small ledge for this very thin cutter. 0.15 inches will do the job. And uh, that way it'll, the screw that holds it down will actually come into contact with every one of the, the cutters. Some of them are as large as 0.2 inches wide, but the, the narrowest is about, one point, about 0.157. So that's kind of the size of a ledge I'm going to build here, 0.150. Double check this to be just sure just how wide that really is. I think it's just a little over 0.1, but we'll confirm it. I'll bring you back when I've got the little ledge cut. Sorry, fellas, I got to working and forgot all about you. I uh, I just ran the uh, tap in there, power tapped it. And I didn't let you uh, watch any part of that. We got a bottom tap here, and I'm going to run down to the bottom of the hole, obviously, to make sure that I'm threaded all the way that I want to be. Right now, I've got a long ways to go, apparently. There we go. Feel the resistance now.
the pulleys on this uh, on this lathe keep working their way loose, which is disturbing to me. Give me the right answer. Okay, so now I have to make my own bolt to go in there, I think. But I'm going to knock off. It's after 9 o'clock. I'm going to knock off and we'll try Redneck Supply to see if they have a cap screw or anything in that size before I make my own. My gears decided to let go of the wall. There's one of them there. I don't know how they were hanging on that hook. Ah, uh, there, there's a sprocket. I guess I just put too much on one, one little nail. Well, in the time it would take me to drive to the local fasten oil location, I can make my own bolt. So that's what I'm going to do. Needs to have about a half inch of thread, and oh, I'm going to try to keep the flats up there pretty good size. I hope we'll see. need to square it down too awful much because I'm going to be cutting that thing down three eighths from from an inch so I think uh, I'll just bring you guys back when we get to the more interesting stuff all right we've got it down to, to size and I'm just going to make a little thread relief there right up close to it so that uh, when I screw it in, it won't have a spot where it's too tight without really pinching down on the cutter. Now, if I can find my uh, tailstock eye holding thing I made the other day well we we'll just use it to thread this thing I've already got the die picked out you guys hang loose a minute or take a nap all right you guys can wake up now and hopefully I've got all this out of the way here let me just come up close to this little booger and get a nice wrench that I can use in case I feel like I need it. There we go. I think that's going to do it. Now, lock that thing down too. Got it locked in the back gear. All right, so I think I'll back the thing off, turn it around to the other side opposite the start on this side spot and make sure that it threads right up against the nut you know right up the thread relief that I made anyway and then I'll have a really perfect complete thread although it's looking pretty good right now it got really really close there All right, back it off, turn it around. I'll wake you guys up here in a minute, but you can see that 
we got a really nice looking thread and it threaded right up close to my thread relief well that's the first time I've used this little bugger and it worked just fine I I don't know why I waited so long to make one now <laughs> oh well all's well that ends well huh and I can try the uh, little arbor on there got it right here I don't know if I've cleaned the hole out really good with chips, but I think I have. Now what I'm going to need is I'm going to need a 4 millimeter keyway in this thing. That latches down pretty tight right there, so that's good. that part's going to work. I have ordered three 4 millimeter end mills from, uh, I guess, Amazon. I was going to order from Zorro, but I don't think they had the right stuff, or they were too expensive, one or the other. But I did order them from Amazon, and they should be here Saturday. So then I'll have to make a little collet for the 4mm uh, end mill, so it'll fit inside the collets that I do have, because I don't have any metric collets, and I don't have anything that small as a 4mm end mill either. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.